there were 3,500 people who finally came. Yeah, and it was nice. It was the greatest wedding ever. <laughs> Um, my name is Moritz. I'm from Germany. I grew up in Germany. I was born in Frankfurt and grew up in Frankfurt, which is uh, at the center of Germany. So basically, if you live there, you can you have a short travel anywhere you want to go, or the shortest travel anywhere you want to go because we're in the center. I was born in Malacca in 1981, and then two years after that, we moved to Ampang, and then uh, my parents are still in Ampang until today. So that's where you grew up. Yeah, that's where we grew up and then after that uh, I had my first education in uh, Gurney School uh, near where's that Felda. Your lips pressed in my neck and full and full in your eyes, but they don't know. I mean how does it how does it normally go? I'd say that you know you always uh, you always meet under friendship circumstances, you know, like you cross you know, cross paths somehow and then uh, you're forced to interact. I mean, like we were uh, in the same courses, having the same assignments. If you're, yeah, you know, when you become good friends, then at some point maybe you take it to a stage further, you know. <laughs> Alright, hi, my name is Fikri. I'm a filmmaker slash writer slash lecturer slash whatever else you want to put there. And this is my wife, Anissa Ifana. Um, hi, I'm Anissa. I'm from Indonesia and I am now live in Jakarta. Then I'm a wedding planner, entrepreneur, and hopefully after this I'm going to have a magazine. But I'm cold as the wind blows, so hold me in your <laughs> Maybe you can start off by the, the point where uh, we nearly met. How about that? The starting yeah, point. Yeah. Yeah. You was the first one who approached me. Yeah. Oh no, this before we before okay, we actually okay, okay. met. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do. Kamu kamu aja. Kamu aja, aku malu. Gitu. Aku juga malu dong. Um, I, I almost, uh, I almost was his student actually, and then at that time I was struggling, so I dropped his class. Yeah. Because she thought it was so be I hard. dumped him before I met him. <laughs> um, but about a year after that, uh, I was making a film with some friends at Monash, and she was waiting for one of them, Diaz, who you might, whose name might actually come up uh, quite a few times in this particular <laughs> interview. Something of an an unofficial matchmaker for the both of us. But she was waiting for Diaz while we were finishing the film. So I saw this girl sitting on the set of this film that I was producing, and I'm thinking. Okay, who is this girl who's <laughs> sitting here? And is she a member of the crew? Is she, a, is she an actress? Is that, what, 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 what is she doing here on my set? So I figured I should go up to her and just ask her what she's doing. You know? No, 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 no. And that wasn't it. That wasn't it? No, uh, no, no. no. I, was, I, I went up to her. I was sitting her. there and then there, there was this guy. He said, Hi, my name is Vickery. <laughs> yeah. And then I was like, Okay, well, whatever. <laughs> We have a friend, Bong. So Bong was like, mm, what's his real name? Arnel. Arnel was like walking with me, you know, went back home. So on the way, while we were walking, he's like, hey, Putri, do you know um, Moritz? I'm like, what? Who? <laughs> Moritz? Yeah, the tall dude with the, you know, the, the, the sweater, blue colored <laughs> sweater. And I'm like, uh, the German dude. And oh. you played ignorant. No, really, I don't know. <laughs> you were like sh so shy. I don't even look at you in a class. Right. Uh, out, of a, out of a group of 20 people, you didn't know me. No, I didn't. Uh -huh. <laughs> you were so quiet. And uh, I think he likes you, you know. Like, uh -huh. what? Really? Yeah. But don't tell him. So until today, I keep on asking him, are you sure you didn't that tell way. Bong yeah. about this? No, I didn't. I think Bong was just like... Bong was a... Observer. Bong is oh, a so matchmaker. Was he, matchmaker. Was, he was like... Was Ooh, like that. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, who can I, who can I match you up with? <laughs> yeah. I didn't expect it to come, come as far as it did, but, but the point is, 
um, and certainly for someone who I've just been hanging around as a friend and we enjoy each other's companies but for her to suddenly not be there I just felt like it's not right so I got her number from DS and then I gave her a call on the second day hmm. on the second day of uh, Ramadan, Ramadan in 2011 and from that second day of Ramadan in 2011 we've been talking on the phone ever since pretty much every night yeah until now until now and then we got together uh, on the 13th of August which was my birthday yeah. before I came back um, to Malaysia we were at the airport and it had been a lovely 10 days or so maybe slightly longer than that and he proposed. I've met people in my life that have, you know, said that they could never see themselves with, uh, you know, an Asian woman or uh, an African woman or I've heard people that said that they are only into blondes or they're only into brunettes or whatever and um, for me it's, that's never been an issue I've always I don't know I've always been open to anything so no her background and her different heritage has never been I, I never it never even crossed my mind really yeah. just about the character I mean I think that's also the most important thing anyway I mean like if you meet somebody what you should really focus on is their character and what you know their persona and everything because that's ultimately what you're going to be connecting to rather than you know the race or the cultural background or anything you know it's always the character um, I would say you know what you never know I mean like that's something that is, is something you're gonna find out you know throughout the course of your life I mean like it's something that at some point people think they do know it's like mm. wow this person is the one but then I mean look at look at how the lives evolve later and at some point it turns out that person <laughs> actually wasn't the one yeah. after all and so like I think it's something that you don't know I mean you're just taking your chances you feel like you know you feel good about a person um, and you feel like you have uh, you have a future together you may have it and you work at that and, and try to make it work you know the summer shorn beat down on bone and back so far from home where the ocean stood down dust and pine gone the way you drive the way you know like everything is organized over here it, like it's it's everything literally everything is different the education the politics the uh, the literature the shopping everything is different everything yeah. the mentality is everything different right and i guess the main thing would always it would always go back to the mentality yeah i mm. guess like the cultural identity in malaysia is very different from the cultural identity in in germany and the thing is that the cultural identity in the US and in Canada is similar enough t for you to just say, oh, you know, like there are slight differences, but on the whole, it's, it's very similar. But over here, the cultural identity is very, very different. You know? when, when I go around with people who don't really know my background, they, and then they're like, are you Malay? And they start to judge you, oh, with my Saleh, are you like naughty, naughty girl, like that, right? So it's like, ugh. You just have to like go through that and until how long do you guys want to think like this? Really, like it was difficult before but now that I'm used to it, I'm like whatever. Like up, up to you guys. I think you guys will come to a conclusion in your latest years inshallah that oh I did a mistake before of judging people. I used I used to doing that so now I know that I, won't, I don't want to judge people anymore after this. Like uh, from when I learned that you don't want to judge people because your life was also uncertain, so might as well just steer this this life here nicely and don't don't dwell with don't don't really think of other people that much. Yeah. In many respects, um, in many respects, uh, and but this is also um, to be taken into consideration because her parents and her family they have people that they have to invite because of the positions they are, that yeah. they are in and so the, the, the sheer size and scale of it was quite a lot for, for Nisa to handle just by herself yeah. but that was what she had to do because I was not able to be there full time you know in Malaysia if somebody is getting married you know you go and do the food tasting together you go and, and apa, nak, nak cari pelamin apa semua kan yeah. okay, you, you sort out everything together baju nak pakai apa you do it together yang ni nak buat apa you do it together the invitation 
the the seating arrangements and apa semua ni kan, right? So you do it together. But the unfortunate thing with Nisa is uh, and and our situation is that because I was not as able to be there as much as other people might have been there for her, you know, um, that made it difficult as well. You know, if I look back at the experience of getting the paperwork done to get married to someone outside of Malaysia. Everything could literally be done within one or two days, mm. simply because. But this this is something I have to bear in mind as well because I'm the guy, and she's the girl. And even within the context of Islam, the girl has to get more paperwork done, the wali and everything similar. Mm. Right? You have to get all these people um, sorted out. You know. So for my part, I don't need to sort that out as much, and so the paperwork for me was less. But I was also very lucky that the system we have here in Malaysia is fairly clear um, at least at least from my experience yeah so the process I went to to get married to her is the same if I would want to get married to someone who's from Subanjaya for example in Subanjaya we had like, oh that one's difficult like oh, you. we drove all over the city because we, uh, from, we got from department to department mm. from ministry to ministry and they all said you have to go to the other ministry and then we went to the other ministry and they said no 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 you have to go to the other ministry and we have to, you have to go back to where you came from Terrible. and then we came back to that one they said no no, no they're wrong and then, go to and then you know, office hours time. you know they only work like uh, they open only at a certain time and the traffic and whatnot is not yeah uh, that was that was a big really, pain in the ass that so. one's terrible it was worth seeing. <laughs> ah, with it love to that yeah then after that my dad said because because we got married along with my oh. sister my sister got married to a dubaian oh. so both of us have to translate our document so i have to translate my document into a german language we have to pay this translator you know every page how many how go to the consulate and everything oh like no, i mean it's, it's expensive i want to talk to my husband and it's a bit challenging for you to do that and then it's a bit costly <laughs> because just yeah. to talk with your husband and then you have to make international call i think yeah so I think our issue, our issue is always about the distance. Yeah. Not really the culture, but always the distance. Yeah. I think the planning to have kids is a bit challenging, you know, because um, I, I want to have a, a child as soon as I got married, but I think now it's a bit difficult because I don't want to be pregnant alone. <laughs> Like I want to have my husband around if I have uh, all the sickness and so yeah we kind of postponed that plan, yeah. Until next year. Until next year. Yeah. Once the school, once we got our degree, once we uh, completed our studies with the master degree, um, Putri went back to Malaysia to uh, fulfill her contract, contractual obligation with UITM, and I moved to Canada um, to work in work and live in Vancouver. And so uh, we were, we were also separated, yeah, mm -hmm. for like. At first, he wanted to pack me up in the bag, <laughs> like let's just go somewhere. I, I wish I could just be like. Because she was uh, unable to change locations mm. for the duration of the contract, and I was able to change locations, and so um, yeah, I took the chance and came over. How do I feel like? whether I want to commit into this relationship or not oh well that one I always just pray and if I feel good about it if I feel right about it I just continue because yeah we came from different background and then we kind of grew up in a very different circumstances yeah yeah but then uh, sometimes we fight <laughs> Yeah. But I don't think it's gonna be more than two days. Yeah, it's and it's not that often. Yeah. 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 I mean, we fight like a lot of other people. But we too. miss each other. Yeah. As much as we get upset or disappointed or frustrated at the other person, uh -huh. ultimately the love. Can I say that? Yeah. The love always. Uh, yeah. yeah. I I I'll give you an example. I forgot to do something for her to help her out very recently on a certain project and she got very upset with me and then I got very upset and disappointed uh, with myself as well and then a few hours later she called back and she said oh I cannot stay mad at you for too long baby 
So I just feel like I got a blank check that allows me to do whatever I want because then she's, she's I'm just I'm just kidding. <laughs> Sometimes when I know that something happened to him and then I ask him, is everything okay honey? And then because you cannot see the expression, you know, uh, you cannot see the gesture. So you have to ask over and over again, are you sure? Honey, what happened? How was your day? And then you have to really work on the communication. If it's not, then just the relationship is going to be over. But because I'm the kind of person who, who if you ask me two or three, he is so three nice. times, I'm like, I'm fine, honey. Why do you keep asking me? Don't you trust me when I'm nah, yeah. yeah. But sometimes I just <laughs> let him to be pissed off because that's when the truth come out. said you know like we're, we are far apart and this is just how it is and mm. we're gonna talk you know when we can talk and when we can't we can't talk and that's just it you know we're gonna have to yeah. make the best of it and yeah. there you go and there's no possibility of controlling who she sees or what she does or whatever and there's no control uh, vice versa no ability to do that mm. and so you just have to let it be mm. can't do it get married to any Indonesian <laughs> Just pick any Indonesian, they're all lovely and beautiful. <laughs> Can I say that? Uh, no. Well, you are lovely and beautiful. Yes, man. You are so beautiful. Malu, malu. Iya. Makanya so, lucu buat kamera dong. Iya, udah tipsnya apa tips? Tipsnya, don't sing to your wife on camera. Yeah, she's <laughs> probably gonna smack you after this once the camera stops rolling of there's no boundaries no limit there's no difference between each other in in this world uh, we are all one we are the same uh, we are when two people come together I mean like if you're if you're talking um, just I mean whether you're talking about different nationalities or different ethnicities or different religions or ages or cultural backgrounds or whatever it's always two people coming together and you always have to make it work with each other yeah. the problem is the problem comes mm. when like one person tries to subdue the other you know like if you have I don't know if you have two systems and you're going against each other and one is trying to control the control other, the and, other. Make and that's wrong and make this person mm. step come over to come the other side, to the side. And forget where they're from mm. then it becomes problematic what you always mm. have to do is you have to open up and you know, Assimilate. overcome the differences and, and respect each other in a sense mm. and try to make it work, you know. Mm. I think that's the most important thing, but that goes mm. for, yeah. you know, for somebody marrying a person from the other side of the world to somebody mm. marrying somebody on the next, you know, from the next street over. You always have to be open to the other person and encourage the differences and celebrate, basically, mm. celebrate the differences mm. rather than trying to suppress them. That's the most important thing. Maybe work on communication. It's the most important thing in any relationship, especially long distance marriage. Yeah. yeah. The most important thing is having this willingness to try and meet certain challenges yeah. head on. Communication is one thing. And in any relationship, there's always going to be fights. I have yeah. absolutely no doubt about that. But at the end of the day, the love that you feel for one another is always going to be bigger than all these things. Yeah. And so the important thing is to find someone who you are comfortable with, who you love, and then to not worry about everything else because this love, hopefully, uh, perhaps somewhat idealistically, but certainly in our case, they will overcome everything else. <laughs>